It is November 2nd, 2021, beautiful city of villages in Florida. My name is Jong Woo Han. I am the president of Korean War Legacy Foundation. We have about 1,500 of Korean War veterans interviewed, not just from the United States, but other 21 countries that participate in the war. We are doing this for the special occasion of the 70th anniversary of the breakout of the Korean War, supported by the MPVA, Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs of Republic of Korea, to preserve your memory, first of all, because it's been a long time, yeah. and also honor your service. But at the same time, we are doing this to educate our young generations to come about the legacy of the Korean War. So mm -hmm. this interview will be analyzed by the teachers that are working for my foundation and will be written as a lesson plans and modules and so on, the curricular resources for the educators to use in the classroom to talk about the Korean War. Mm -hmm. It's my great honor and pleasure to meet you, sir, and thank you for coming for the interview. Please introduce yourself. What is your name and spell it for the audience, please? My name is Harold Huff. H-U-F-F. -F. And what is your birthday? March 13th, 1933. 33, so you are now 88. I'm 88, yes. You look great, sir. Well, thank you. I play golf four days a week, trying to stay really? young. Really? Yep. I am also playing golf. All right. I'm in love with it. It's great. What is your average? Well, it depends. <laughs> I, I play mostly the executive courses, the nine hole courses. The 18 hole course, about hole 15, I get tired, so I don't play them as much anymore. Do you walk or riding? Of course I ride. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you born? I was born in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. New what? New Wilmington, W-I-L-M-I-N-G-T-O-N. In Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And tell me about your family background, your parents and your siblings when you were growing up. Okay, I was the oldest of four. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father was never in the military, mm. unfortunately. He tried to go in but, uh, during the Second World War, but he was too old, so he didn't get in. But uh, I did. I got drafted then. My brother was also in, who is now lives in Las Vegas, but uh, he missed a Korean War. Of course, he was too young for it. So you were born in Wilmington. New Wilmington, and uh, where did you go to school? I went to school in New Wilmington High School, then I attended Youngstown University. So tell well, me about the high school name. New Wilmington Greyhounds. New Wilmington. Right, Greyhounds was their mascot. Great what? Greyhounds. Hounds. H-O-U-N-D-S, uh-huh. Yeah, high school. When did you graduate? In 1951. So, when you were in high school, did you learn anything about Korea? I did not. They didn't teach anything about Korea? No, they did not. Why not? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so you didn't know where Korea was then in the I, map? I did not until I got drafted. Oh my goodness. So now you are the Korean War veterans, yes. right? Yes, sir. So what do you think about it? You didn't know damn thing about Korea, now you are the Korean War veteran. Well, I'm a How Korean did it happen? Veteran. Well, as I said, I got drafted. Of course, I went to Camp Gordon, the now Fort Gordon, Georgia. I went through basic training there and then through leadership school and all through radio repair school. When did you draft it? I was drafted in 1953. Oh. So you already knew that Korean War broke out? Oh, yes. I what knew. did you know about the Korean War? Well, I knew it was bad. I knew that uh, we were losing a lot of soldiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was ready to go. Unfortunately, I was married and had a child. Uh, but I went anyhow, drafted. Of course, I couldn't take my wife with me when I went to... I was stationed in Japan. So you were married at the time? I was married. When did you marry? I got married in 53, February. Uh -huh. Went in the military in April. I got my draft notice in December for Christmas present. So you knew that you are going to be drafted, yeah. but you're still married. Yeah, well, we'd already set the date. Hmm. So I didn't have much choice. She said, you're getting married. Wasn't she afraid that she might lose you in the war? I don't believe so. Hmm. 
we had gone together in high school for three years. So a high school? High school sweetheart. Sweetheart. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's her name? Her name was Nancy. Nancy, and is she alive? No, she died in 2006. I'm sorry. That's all right. I've been remarried in 2011. Okay. So it's all life is good. Life is good. So when you left for Korea, how did she respond? Well, she was upset, of course, but what could we say? I mean, I had to go, and that was my duty to, to go. So I went. I was on the trip, troop ship USS Mann going over. USS what? Mann, M-A-N-N. -N. From where? From San Diego. San Diego. I'm sorry, San Francisco. San went Francisco. Under, went under the Golden Gate. Uh-huh. When did you leave from Korea, uh, USA, San uh, Francisco? Now you're asking questions. I'm getting old. I forget dates. <laughs> I know. Uh, you can tell me. What month? I went over there in, I left April. It was just a year after I'd gone in. 53, you mean, or 54? 54. Four. And where did you land in Korea? I landed in, actually, I didn't go to Korea. I went to Japan. I got pulled off the troop ship in Japan mm -hmm. at Yokohama. It was on mm. its way over to Korea. I was going over as a platoon leader. I'd gone through leadership school. So that's what they were doing with me. And why didn't you go to Korea? Well, because they pulled me off the troop ship. Mm -hmm. My orders got changed while I was underway, apparently. Right. So and then I got TDY to Chofu. What is that? That was an, an old army base, an old zero, Japanese zero base. Could you repeat that? TD? TDY, temporary T duty station. Oh. I was stationed actually out of Yokohama. Uh -huh at the headquarters company down there, Signal Corps, transferred up to Chofu. Chofu. Cho, C-H-O-F-U. In Japan. In Japan. Okay. And what was your unit? I was, well, actually, I was attached to the headquarters company. Of what? Of division what? or battalion? The division, yes. What division? Honestly, I do not remember. <laughs> I was just glad to get home. <laughs> so then what was your specialty? Radio repair. Radio repair. Right. So what did you do in Japan? You'd never been to Korea, right? I, not to been to Korea, no. Yeah. So what did you do in Japan? I worked on radios, Army aircraft radios, reconnaissance aircraft. Army? Reconnaissance aircraft radios. Ah, recon aircraft. Right. So tell me about it some more detail about your duties of doing it, what kind of work you did well, in Well, I worked Japan. on radio repairs at Chofu. We, radios were sent back from Korea, uh -huh. along with some of the planes. In fact, pictures I have show the planes have been shot up, where they reconnaissance planes fly low, looking for troops, and they had been shot up. I took bullets out of radios, many of them. Also, you repair the Army Reconnaissance Aircraft, aircraft Radio radios, correct. that was in Korea correct. and you brought it back and repaired it. Yes. So, how was it? Well, it was terrible seeing radios shot up like they were, but we did, we fixed them. Huh. There was six of us. What outside. kind of aircraft was it? Well, we had L3s, L17s, L23s, uh, light aircraft. Most of them were, you know, single motor ones. Mm -hmm. The L-23 did have two, it was a Queen Air type of aircraft. So, what was like a workload? Every day? Every day. Every day? Every day we had something to do. I also worked on the Omni Station, which was the, at the end of the runway, we had one single runway. It was an old zero base, and we worked on the Omni station also, which sends out a, a figure eight showing the aircraft how to come into the airstrip. So we did that as well as, maintained that as well as. It was in the middle of a hydroponic farm, actually, where they grew the vegetables for all the Korean veterans. Mm. They sent the food over to Korea from Japan. What did you hear about the Korean War at the time? Well, what I heard about it was bad, it was dangerous. I mean, I met several of the veterans that had been over there. Oh. 
So they told us a lot of stories. That tell me about to. it. What did, what did they well, tell you? They told me how bad it was, how cold it was in the wintertime, particularly how cold it was, uh, how dangerous it was. You never knew really whether he was going to make it through the day or not, mm. basically, is what it boiled down to. It was just, how do you describe war? But you were lucky. I was very lucky. Very. I was very happy I got pulled off the troop ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what was your rank at the time? I was a PFC, private PFC. first class. And PFC. Yeah. And tell me about the routine and the life there in Chofu. Well, of course, we got up and went to, we had tomatoes every day for breakfast, noon, and dinner. Why? Why? I was in Mildred Hydroponic Farm, so they had plenty of tomatoes. So they grew tomatoes. So rather than go bad, they sent we had them for breakfast every meal. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the thing we used to. Did you like it? At. Oh, I love tomatoes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they you. were good. <laughs> you were lucky not to go to Korea, and you were lucky to have a tomato every meal. Every meal. <laughs> that's right. I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was very interesting duty. That uh, it was something that I'll never forget. Uh, it was something that. Well, after I got out of the military, I did. I traveled all over the world doing work for the Navy in radios, telephones, primarily. Oh. So uh, it was an experience. It was an experience that I'll never forget. I'll always cherish, actually, mm. uh, even though it was a bitter time. So even that gives you the career path, and oh, yeah. you've been all over the world doing the same thing. I have. Yes, I was working basically on telephones after I got out uh -huh. uh, in a telephone industry type thing. And then I went to work for a government contractor and traveled all over. I've been to Philippines, I've been to Diego Garcia, I've been to Italy, I don't know how many times, to Ireland, England, Spain. So I've been all around. You are a lucky man. Well, I was very lucky <laughs> in that respect. Yeah. I've done a lot of traveling. I'm glad it's all over, though. I'm happy now. I'm settled down. So how was Japan at the time? It was in 1954, right? It was in 54, right. Uh, it was a whole lot different than it is today, I understand. Of course, I haven't been back, but mm. I understand it's different. Uh, we would catch on weekends. We'd catch a train into Tokyo. We were about 20 miles out of Tokyo, near what we called the Japanese Hollywood. So we did see some of the Japanese movie stars on the train, but we'd go in every weekend. That was our weekend to go in and have a massage. The massage parlors were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those hot water baths and that, oh. Come out of there, felt like a noodle. <laughs> so that was our weekend. There was four of us who went every weekend, did the same thing, so it was fun. We had a pool, an old Army Zero, or. Uh, Japanese Zero ACAC gun emplacement they made into a swimming pool for us right at the end of our barracks. So we went right out the door and in the swimming pool. <laughs> so, I mean, we had to, basically the good life, if you can say that, during war. Yeah. So, why not? Why not, right? Yeah. It's not you made a choice, but it was given to you. It was given to me. Yeah. That's right. That's what we call luck. That's right. Yeah. Maybe you this good things before the, the life, well, past life. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> so when did you come back from Japan? I came back in 55. 55? Yes. And what did you do? After I got out of the military, Yeah. I went to work for AT&T, a long line repeater station. Mm. That's how I got into the telephone industry. So I worked Where? in Newcastle, Pennsylvania which was nine miles from New Wilmington. Um, remembering all those, the service that you did for during the Korean War, you are yeah. the Korean War veteran. Right. And think about it. How did your service make yourself different, if there were any, any contribution from that experience? Well, it made me grow up, if nothing else. I think. 
any, but I think I have a feeling that everybody should have to spend at least a year in the military. Hmm. Why? I think it teaches a respect. Mm -hmm. It teaches you to look at what's happening around the world and in your life. It makes you grow up, is the easiest way to put it. Mm -hmm. And it helped me, I know. Any episode you want to share during your service in Chofu? Anything you remember related to Korea or anything else, but you still remember it? I've forgotten so much. <laughs> I'm getting old, I forget a lot of things. Uh -huh. uh, I can't think of things specifically other than that it was an experience that I'll always have with me. Any dangerous moments during your service in Chofu? Well, I didn't have any dangerous moments in Chofu. I had dangerous moments going over. Over. We caught a typhoon, uh -huh. tail end of a typhoon. I see. Put a 11 foot crack in the base of the ship. They had to send that must divers be over. Awful. To... <laughs> that was a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I, I can't think of anything specifically. Uh -huh. I mean, I hate to see those planes come back all shot up. Uh, type thing, knowing that they were still shooting at us, even after supposedly the truce had been signed. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that Korean War, known as Forgotten War, why has it been forgotten? You know, that I've often wondered that myself as to why. Uh, I can't answer why it was forgotten. But people just didn't take it seriously, as serious as they had did the Second World War or, or as the Vietnam War. I don't think they took it as serious. Mm. And I don't know why. I've never understood why. So even though you were not in the Korean soil, toilet, I mean the theater, right. but still you know how Korea has been changed, right? Oh, yes. Do you know anything? Yes. Do you want to share that with the... Well, this interview will be listened by the children's, okay. school children. So tell me, tell me, well, tell them. Well, the, the turmoil they were in before the war, and then they went over to try and help satisfy, create a different democracy type thing for them, where they would know the better choices of life as opposed to what they were prior to mm -hmm. the war. Uh, from what I can understand, I've never been back to Korea or over to Korea, but I've talked to several Korean people who are here in here. the States. They said life is so much better than it was prior to that, that their parents had suffered drastically. So they were so appreciative of the war being and taken care of. Uh, look what North Korea is still going through. What do you know about North Korea now? Well. Not a whole lot because you don't hear a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, the people I see in the paper just recently that they have to cut back on their eating even to this day. Now that that's, should never be. They should have what they need. Uh, and South Korea, fortunately, is a complete opposite of that right now. Isn't that interesting, it's right? It's very interesting to me. Uh, the, the difference of one little country at 38th parallel, what a difference between the South and the North. Mm -hmm. Now here in the States, the North and the South is pretty much the same. Or East and West, whichever way you want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah. Yes. So, what do you want to say to the Korean people in, in the 70th anniversary of the breakout of the Korean War? What would you say to them? Oh, boy. Enjoy life. I guess is the simplest way I can put it. Uh -huh. Enjoy what you have. Because you didn't have it before, you do have it now. Excellent point. Yeah. So that's the best way I can put it. Mm -hmm. Are you proud of yourself as a Korean War veteran? I am. Even though I wasn't in Korea, I'm very proud to have served. Mm -hmm. And I'd do it again today if I was called. Rather than playing golf? Rather than playing golf. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. 
Any other story that you want to share with uh, this interview? I can't think of anything specifically. I mean, there's a multitude of things probably. I'm, I'm pleased with my life, the way it's turned out. I'm pleased that I'm still here. Uh, God's good. Mm -hmm. Best way I can put it. Are you Christian? I am. Excellent. All right. Unless you have anything else to share. Well, I can't think of anything other. Thank left, you, Harold. I brought some pictures. I'll go yes. Ahead and scan your pictures right yep. now. Yep. Okay. So thank you very much again for your service, honorable service, and thank you for coming for the interview. Thank well, you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, sir.